Hello and welcome. We were talking about power sharing, first chapter, class 10th civics. This is the second video. In the first video, we have discussed about the meaning, why we need power sharing, why the power sharing is desirable, and what are the different forms of power sharing. So, this is the second part, and I told you in the first part that we're going to start with the, uh, the case study okay to understand the power sharing in a very better way so this is a second video about the case study Belgium Belgium is the first country that we are uh, going to take okay let's uh, discuss what is what is about Belgium here? Belgium is a federal monarch in Western Europe. It is a founding member of the European Union and the host and host the EU's headquarters. EU is a European Union's headquarter as well as those of uh, several other major international organizations such as NATO. Belgium covers an area of 30,528 30, square kilometers and it has a population of about 11 million people so this is very important 11 million people and uh, while discussing this power sharing and how the belgium accommodate the people in their country this population is a factor which we, which is very important right so this is the ethnic composition of belgium this is how the society was divided among all the people, it was 59% the people who were speaking Dutch, 59%, 40% was speaking French and only 1% people they were speaking Germans. So this was a condition of whole country. But if you see the Brussels, Brussels is a capital city, capital city of Brussels. So if you see the Brussels, the condition is reverse. If you see the whole country, then who is in the majority, it is written, it is clearly mentioned that 59% is Dutch speaking people. So Dutch was having the majority in the whole country. But if we refer, if we see the capital city of Brussels, then the situation is, is a bit surprising. Here, the French speaking peoples are in majority in the capital. So this is the diversity. This shows the diversity of Belgium, right? And it was, uh, we can say, task for the Belgium government to accommodate this diversity, okay, without any conflict. So what they have done, this is the accommodation of uh, Belgium. So constitution of Belgium states that the number of Dutch and French speaking ministers shall be, shall be equal in central government. So it was all decided. So this is about the constitution of Belgium, right? So they wanted to maintain the equality in the central government. That is why the, the, the ministers, the number of ministers of both the uh, community is equal, right? Second is many power of a central government has been given to the state government. This is one kind of decentralization where the powers of central government has been given to the state government. So the Belgium, the constitution of Belgium, they wanted to uh, empower the state, right? And that is why some of the power it has been given to the state also from central government. Third is the Brussels have a separate government. Brussels, the capital city of Brussels has a separate government in which each party have the equal representation. So somewhere or to the other, the equality it has been maintained here and as we have discussed our third level the power was been divided into at different levels at different levels it was been divided in our country and it was the third level it was if you remember it was the local government but here in belgium it was the community government which was the third level of the government so there is a third kind of government called community government which is elected by the people belonging to one language community so one language community only they're going to uh, contest they're going to cast their vote to their community people only right 
and we called it as community government. This was ex this was an experiment by the uh, Belgium, and it is a very successful one, right? Through this, they maintains harmony because they maintain equality in their administration. Another country, if you see Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka officially a democratic socialist republic of Sri Lanka is an island country in the northern India Ocean of the southern coast of in uh, of the Indian subcontinent, the South Asia, known until 1972 as Ceylon. Sri Lanka has maritime borders with India to the northwest and the Maldives to the southwest. This is about the uh, location of uh, Sri Lanka. Okay, then. So it is very important as we have discussed the, for the Belgium also we have discussed the ethnic composition and here also it is very important for the Sri Lanka. So if we see here the left hand side Sri Lankan Tamils they occupy north and east north and eastern part and the population was Hindus and Muslims. Out of this Tamils were of 18% Indian Tamils here is the uh, Indian Tamils okay they are Hindus and Muslims. Here you can see here Sinhalis 74% and they were having Buddhist. Right? They were all Buddhist. And here both Sinhalas and Tamils 7% but they were all Christians and Muslims 1%. So by this we can see clearly who is in majority. So it was the people speaking Sinhala language having Buddhist Buddhism in their religion it is 74 percent so this is again here um, if you can see the diversity is there some communities are in majority some are in minority in Belgium also we have seen some are majority and some are in minority so it is there but then how they accommodate different peoples so reasons for the alienation of Sri Lankan Tamils and majoritarianism in Sri Lanka. So what, what does it mean? It means if it is written majoritarianism in Sri Lanka, that means they did not follow equality. They simply follow majority, right? They simply majority. So what they have done to prove majority? Dominance of Sinhala's community due to majority. So it is a attitude of majoritarianism. So what? Uh, any act that uh, gave the Sinhala officially official status as official language so 1956 act made the Sinhala as the only official language only official language there was no any other language which was in officials like in India we are having 22 official languages but in Sri Lanka it was only one and that was Sinhala which was a majority community prevent preferential policies of favoring Sinhalas in universities position university position and jobs so if they were in majority so the preference was been given to them state to protect foster to protect and foster Buddhism so it was the official language was Sinhala and the official religion was Buddhism Right? So they simply follow the majority and that is why we are saying it is majoritarianism. So obviously if they follow majority then what happened to minority? Let's see condition of Tamils. The minority is one. The Tamils felt, uh, felt isolated. They thought that even the constitution was against them. Obviously anybody can think right. If their interest was not been carried out by the constitution then the people they uh, they can get this kind of feeling none of the political parties ever considered their needs even the constitution if constitution is not considering their needs so which political party will be going to consider no party right so the Tamil formed a group nobody was listening constitution was not listening the political parties was not listening so what they have done they formed their own groups organization and parties to fight uh, for, for fight for their rights so the position what was their position launched political parties and struggle for recognition recognizing Tamil as an official language it was Sinhala but they wanted recognition of Tamil as an official language though they demanded the second demand was autonomy 
demanded autonomy in the administration in the country equal opportunity in education and job though it was not been followed they simply follow majoritarianism they they wanted equality equality in opportunity right next is about the political organization it was been neglected this demands and that is why they formed a political organization demanding an independent tamil elam in north and east sri lanka tamil elam it is an separate the demand of separate country having a autonomous status so here their demands for recognition to their language and separate state with autonomous status were repeatedly neglected neglected by whom neglected by the government this made some groups like ltte to take violent action so ltte right liberation tigers so they formed a group we can say and for their uh, to to fulfill their demands so it was ltte then what happened this all condition gave birth to a civil war civil war here so what does it mean civil war a war between groups of people who lived in the same country so it is it is uh, it is there in the sri lanka different groups of people majority and minority were fighting in the same country in their own country it was sri lanka and that is why it is all called as civil war and what was the causes what happened to the civil war both sides started distrusting each other obviously in the at the time of war nobody will going to trust each other so it was all started what was that effect if the war started so the destruction the setback they have seen social cultural and economic setback they have seen right so this was all about civil war this was all about sri lanka right now this is a comparative study between belgium and sri lanka we will see that how though though they have uh, taken right they they having a uh, we can say uh, diversities but they uh, having different plans we can say they address diversities in different ways right so what happened the comparison between the belgian and sri lankan form of power sharing so belgium used the system of power sharing while sri lanka uses the system of majoritarianism so understood this majoritarianism they followed sri lankan people the sri lankan government followed majoritarianism the french and the dutch were the power holders equally so they followed equality in belgium while the sinhalese simply followed the policy of majoritarianism belgium has been able to combat ethnic war there was no ethnic war in the belgium there was no civil war but in sri lanka we have seen it was a ethnic discrimination was that this leads to a war that is civil war so this is all about belgium and sri lanka to understand power sharing better one country accommodate diversity in a very successful way that leads to communal harmony uh, harmony in the country but if you see the sri lanka it leads to a destruction right so this is about power sharing the whole chapter and uh, yes thank you very much this is from my side